What's going on, everyone? I ha today I have an iOS 6 review video for you guys, and what I'm going to be reviewing is iOS 6 Beta 4, which I believe was released two to three days ago. And basically, what I'm just going to be going over is the changes and new features that Apple has included in this fourth beta version of iOS 6. So, let's go ahead and jump in here. So. As you guys can tell, the lock screen looks exactly the same, nothing different. But, as you, as you guys may notice now, on the home screen, there is no built-in YouTube application. And the reason for that is Apple's license uh, with Google has ended. So they do not, or can, they don't have the ability to be able to have the YouTube app on, their, on iOS uh, anymore. But, uh, they did state that Google is working on a new YouTube app, which should be available in the App Store, uh, sometime when iOS 6 is actually released. So, maybe this will be a good thing, because the, uh, the stock YouTube app was kind of, um, there's a lot of stuff left out. It didn't have very many features. So hopefully this new YouTube app that Google's working on will have a lot more features such as editing your videos and just and replying to comments and stuff like that. So it's pretty cool. But an alternative for now is you can add the Safari version of mobile YouTube to your home screen as you can tell here and it'll take when you tap on it it'll launch you with uh, to the uh, mobile YouTube site. So it's pretty good. Uh, these next two things are also related with YouTube, and that they have, or they are related with video. So you still have the ability to, to upload video for, uh, straight from your device. As you can tell here, you can hit the little YouTube icon. Um, so basically, YouTube's database is actually still built into iOS, but you just can't actually view the data on YouTube, like the videos and everything. But pretty cool. Um, I'm glad that that feature is still there, because if Apple were to take that away, I would be very disappointed, because that is something that I use quite frequently. Um, next is the second part, or the third thing of YouTube, and that is when you're actually in the upload window for uploading to the actual YouTube, uh, you now get... <clears throat> I have the option to switch accounts right from the upload window. So you can tap on this and you can sign in and out from the YouTube account that you want to be signed in. Which is pretty nice. It's a good addition there. <coughs> Next is new options in the privacy section in the settings app. So when you go to privacy, you now get a Bluetooth sharing option, a Twitter option, and a Facebook option. And Bluetooth sharing is just essentially a place where you can view all the apps that are um, using Bluetooth file sharing. Such as, um, one, I don't know, I can't really give you guys a specific, a specific thing, but any apps that are using file sharing via, bu oh, excuse me, can't talk, uh, via Bluetooth will be uh, show up under this section. Uh, same thing with Twitter and Facebook. Uh, any apps that want to access your Twitter account will show up here. Same thing with Facebook. Any apps will show up under this section. Which is pretty nice. It gives you more information on what is using what. Um, next is an App Store uh, button under the pace, uh, in the Passbook app. Um, that uh, button will only show up if you do not already have passes inside the app. Um, as you guys can tell here, I have three passes inside the Passbook app, so unfortunately the button is not there, but if you do not have any passes at, um, any passes at all, uh, an App Store button will show up down here on the bottom of the screen, and you can tap that, and it will direct you to the App Store, where you can what I assume, download apps that support Passbook. <laughs> Which, uh, 
I see f a lot of potential with this, actually. So, we'll just have to wait and see what Apple decides to do with that. Um, next is a shared calendar option. Uh, under the mail, contacts, and calendars. My email is going to be here, so i got to get that out of the way. Okay. So now, in the mail, contacts, and calendars section under settings, you now get this shared calendar alert switch, which, as it says here, it says when enabled, you will be able to, you will be notified about new, modified, or deleted shared events. So basically, what this is, is it allows you to get alerts on things that have changed throughout all of your iOS devices that you currently own, which is pretty cool. I have not particularly found. Uh, a use for this yet, but I pr uh, will as soon as iOS 6 is fully released. Because my iPod Touch 4th Gen here is the only one that is running iOS 6 at the moment. So, moving on. Uh, this feature, I believe, is only for the iPhone 4S and the iPad 2 and 3. <coughs> and that is a world view in the Maps application. Um, basically it shows the Maps app just like Google Earth, so when you scroll all the way out as far as you can go, it'll give you a uh, Google Earth kind of view where you can see the entire world. But, on the 4th generation iPod Touch, unfortunately, you do not get that world <coughs> um, view feature, which is a bummer. I would have liked to try that out, but, oh well, <clears throat> um, this is something that I also cannot show, um, it is only on the iPhone and the, uh, iPad with a 3G data connection, um, it is called Wi-Fi plus cellular, and basically what that is, is if an app is having trouble accessing its data through Wi-Fi, it'll automatically switch to the 3D, uh, 3G data. So, it's pretty nice. Oh, we just got a bunch of alerts. Shut up. Okay. But anyway, that feature seems like it'd be pretty useful. I'd first have to try it out. Um, this is uh, another thing that I cannot show you. And it has to do with Siri. And basically, what Apple has done is allow or has added a lot more um, information on the information section of Siri. So when you ha tap the little eye icon uh, when you bring up Siri, it's pretty good. It essentially just gives you more sayings and. Um, yeah, there's basically more commands that you can say. Because in beta 3, that was not there. Um, this next one is not actually a feature, but in iOS 6 beta 4, um, it automatically scales to a larger display, which um, I suspect is due to the iPhone 5. Um, this kind of ports points towards the iPhone 5. Uh, the resolution is 1136 by 640. So I'll po put a um, uh, a picture right here on the screen showing what the icons look like when scaled to that new resolution. <clears throat> so uh, moving on. This next one is you should you get a setup screen on iOS 6 beta 4 when you're updating from iOS 6 beta 3. So, I'm going to put some pictures on the screen showing that here in just a sec. So, they should be right around this area. <coughs> uh, but yeah, basically, it gives you a setup screen that looks exactly like what you would see when purchasing a brand new iOS device, where you get the setup screen uh, to configure location services, iCloud, Apple ID, um, 
find my iPhone, all that stuff. But it all it gives you is um, to enter your password so you can set up iCloud, which um, is pretty odd. I'm not sure if Apple is going to have you do this every single time you update, but I I wouldn't mind if they did. Uh, but anyway, next one is another thing that involves Passbook. And what it does is it shoots the screen brightness to full brightness when you open the app, even though your device may be in low brightness. So, Passbook should shoot it to bright, uh, high brightness. There you go. It puts it to full brightness. Oops. And then when you click out, it goes back to the uh, brightness setting that you currently had it before. Pretty cool. It's just so you can see it better, and just in case if you have the brightness down, and you're needing to quickly uh, scan something. Next is a slight uh, fix. Um, when you're playing music on the lock screen, uh, right here, I don't have any music, so I can't particularly demonstrate it. But when you're playing music from the lock screen, and then you go to put it in sleep mode. Um, every time you would hit the, uh, up and, volume up and volume down buttons, it would wake the screen up, which could potentially waste, uh, battery. But in iOS 6 Beta 4, that no longer is the case, so every time you hit the volume up and volume down, the screen stays dark and will not turn on. And, last but not least, is much more labels inside the Maps application. So let me go to a place that has a lot of restaurants and stores. So let me search for that town. There we go. Okay, now let me zoom in real quick. I'm not, I have a really slow Wi-Fi connection, so sorry about that. It's going to take a little while to render the maps. It's kind of is annoying. Okay. So, anyway, you now get a lot more little uh, label icons. And, as you can see there, you now get a little Apple Store icon as well. So, if you have an Apple Store near you, you'll get a little icon telling you where it is. So, you can tap on that. And it will give you the rating for that current store and give you Yelp um, information about it, which is pretty cool. But anyway, as you guys can tell, all around this area, there is a lot of little icons. Which, before in this current city or town that I am looking in right now, all of these little icons were not here. There's only a few scattered around, say over here, and a few over in this area. But, yeah, they've really enhanced the Maps app to have a lot more icons, which I personally like. So it gives me more information about restaurants. So, but anyway, that is the last feature that I have personally found in iOS 6 Beta 4. Um, if you guys have found any that I have missed, just go ahead and post it in the comments below. And yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, hit the subscribe button right there. Uh, thumbs up the video. And comment below if you have any questions. Or any suggestions. Or anything you have found. Or anything like that. Just comment below. And yeah, once again, thanks for watching. And peace out.